Determining when a patient with mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome has relapsed or is refractory to their current systemic therapy involves careful examination of and good communication with your patient. The reappearance of skin manifestations of the disease and symptoms are usually clear signals that a particular treatment has stopped working. Patients will tell you that their pruritus has worsened, which is impacting their sleep, uh, or they're scratching themselves a little bit more, resulting in skin irritation. Beyond skin, I also consider whether it has stopped working in other compartments, um, that is blood, lymph nodes, and viscera. The goal of therapy is to slow progression and manage symptoms. Patients with advanced mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome are more symptomatic and have more aggressive disease than those with early stage disease. For these patients, I want to take a treatment approach that considers disease compartments. I'm also looking for durable responses because these patients can cycle through available treatments pretty quickly. Although we should view all compartments with the context of full picture of the disease, we know that increasing blood burden is associated with or a prognosis for both mycosis fungoides and Cesare syndrome. Increasing blood tumor burden has previously been linked to worsening overall survival and disease-specific survival, as well as increased risk of disease progression. My goal is to treat patients with blood involvement aggressively. The NCCM guidelines provide recommendations for treating patients with blood involvement. Artelegio is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with relapse or refractory mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome after at least one prior systemic error. In the Maverick trial, uh, Patelegia was studied in a broad range of patients. Two cutaneous T cell lymphoma subtypes were represented in the trial, with 56% of patients having mycosis fungoides and 44% of patients having Cesare syndrome. Patients with stage 1b to stage 4 were included in the trial. Patients with all blood classification, that is B0, B1, and B2, were enrolled and may be appropriate for treatment with patelegia. The wide range of ages were represented in the study with patients ranging in age from 25 to 101. Finally, subjects in the study had been previously treated with a wide variety of ages. I encourage physicians to look at the characteristics of patients included in the Maverick trial. Indication. Potoligio mogamulizumab KPKC injection for intravenous infusion is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed or refractory mycosis fungoides, MF, or Cesare syndrome, SS, after at least one prior systemic therapy. Important safety information, warnings and precautions. Dermatologic toxicity. Monitor patients for rash throughout the course of treatment. For patients who experienced dermatologic toxicity in trial one, the median time to onset was 15 weeks, with 25% of cases occurring after 31 weeks. Interrupt potoligio for moderate or severe rash, grades two or three. Permanently discontinue potoligio for life-threatening grade four rash or for any Stevens-Johnson syndrome, SJS, or toxic epidermal necrolysis, 10. Infusion reactions. Most infusion reactions occur during or shortly after the first infusion. Infusion reactions can also occur with subsequent infusions. Monitor patients closely for signs and symptoms of infusion reactions and interrupt the infusion for any grade reaction and treat promptly. Permanently discontinue potoligio for any life-threatening grade 4 infusion reaction. Infections. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of infection and treat promptly. Autoimmune complications. Interrupt or permanently discontinue potoligio as appropriate for suspected immune-mediated adverse reactions. Consider the benefit-risk of potoligio in patients with a history of autoimmune disease. Complications of allogeneic HSCT after potoligio. Increased risk of transplant complications have been reported in patients who received allogeneic HSCT after potoligio. 
follow patients closely for early evidence of transplant-related complications. Adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions reported in greater than or equal to 10% of patients with Podoligio in the clinical trial were rash, including drug eruption, 35%, infusion reaction, 33%, fatigue, 31%, diarrhea, 28%, drug eruption, 24%, upper respiratory tract infection, 22%, musculoskeletal pain, 22%, skin infection, 19%, pyrexia 17%, edema 16%, nausea 16%, headache 14%, thrombocytopenia 14%, constipation 13%, anemia 12%, mucositis 12%, cough 11%, and hypertension 10%. You are encouraged to report suspected adverse reactions to Kiowa Kieran Incorporated at 1-844-768-3544 or FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088 or fda.gov slash medwatch.